What if you're on top of your game in the biggest basketball league in the world, but in the blink of an eye, it was all taken from you in just one tragic play? At just 21 years of age, and with that kind of gruesome injury, Sean Livingston could have easily given up his NBA career and simply focused on life after basketball. But he didn't. He eventually rose back to the top after switching zip codes and jerseys for the next couple of years. Who would have thought that this guy would have become a vital piece in the Dubs rotation that won three championships from 2015 to 2018? Sit back and grab your popcorn, guys, because you don't want to miss this inspiring zero to hero story of Sean Livingston. Sean Patrick Livingston was born on September 11th, 1985, and grew up in a Lutheran community in Peora, Illinois. When Sean was just two years old, his mom, Anne, who was just 21 at the time, wasn't ready for motherhood and left the Livingston household and left Sean in the care of the most influential man in Sean's life, his father Reggie and grandfather Frank, a former ex-Marine who had his tour of duty during the Korean War. Looking back over the situation he had with his mom's unexpected departure, here's what Sean had to say. I wondered a little bit why she left. I started thinking that I wanted to give her a chance to get to know me. Did I want to say, I never knew my mom? It was weird the first time we met. She was ecstatic about it. Anyway, moving on here. Basketball was implanted in Sean's DNA from a really young age because according to his dad by the second grade, he already learned how to dribble two balls simultaneously while being blindfolded. Growing up in a tougher neighborhood of town, Sean initially felt that he didn't belong when he attended the private Concordia Lutheran grade school. There were days when my dad and grandpa had to work and I would call a cab to get to school. I felt a little embarrassed and would get out a block before school. There were kids getting dropped off in a Mercedes or a Lexus. I didn't want them to see me. But this slight setback didn't stop Sean from unleashing his true potential on the court. As a seventh grader, he was already embarrassing grown men thanks to his advanced dribbling skills and his height. During the span of three seasons, from sixth up to eighth grade, Livingston dominated the high school basketball scene and led his team to a perfect 87-0 record, which was capped off with back-to-back -back state titles in 1999 and 2000. On Livingston at the line, 52, 40, Lutheran, crown him, state. After playing competitive basketball in Richwoods High School for two years, he then transferred to Peoria Central High School, where he would once again lead his team to back-to-back -to -back state titles, this time in 2003 and 2004. With an impressive basketball track record from grade school to high school, he was named Illinois Mr. Basketball in 2004 after averaging 18.5 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists. At this point in time, lots of top Division I schools were interested in adding the tall point guard into their basketball program, but in the end, Sean committed to be a part of the Blue Devils program and to play under the legendary coach, Mike Skrzyzewski. Though playing for the Blue Devils was already in the books at that point, Sean knew deep inside that he has what it takes in terms of skill and talent to leap to the pros directly. His grandpa, on the other hand, wanted him to play for Duke and hold on to his NBA dreams for a bit longer. Nobody can tell me one good reason for Sean to go to the NBA. All the people telling Sean to take the money are already just looking out for themselves. If he's at Duke, that will give all these hang-oners a year or so to learn how to take care of themselves. But despite the defiance of his family, they knew that this life-turning decision would ultimately rest upon Sean's shoulders. I've always wanted my grandpa to be proud of me, and I want him to see me play in the NBA. I'll use the same procedure that enabled me to pick Duke. I'll listen to my family and close friends. I'm not going to pretend the money isn't going to be a big part of it. This is a huge opportunity for me. We'll see. This will be my biggest decision of my life. Whatever happens, I hope Coach K understands. After consulting his family and weighing in his gut feel, Sean decided to withdraw his commitment to Duke and declare to join the 2004 NBA draft instead. With the draft being dominated by skillful big men and wing players like Dwight Howard, Emeka Okafor, Luol Dang, and Andre Iguodala, Sean came out as the top pure point guard in the draft and was selected as the fourth overall pick by the Clippers. Select Sean Livingston from Peoria Central High School. Everyone was taken aback when Livingston stepped onto the NBA hardwood for the very first time. You've got this six foot seven kid who parades an old school throwback vibe with his high socks and his eye catching mushroom afro that can push his overall height to seven feet. And what's even weirder was that he was a tall point guard who doesn't shoot much threes, which was considered to be pretty unconventional around this time. 
Growing up idolizing Pistol Pete Maravich, Sean displays his own brand of basketball by having eagle eye vision when setting up his teammates and harnessing high basketball IQ, as well as showcasing a natural feel for the game while being uber athletic. Livingston on the drive. Ross deflected it. Livingston comes up with a three on one. His rookie numbers were pretty solid. As the main facilitator for the Clippers offense, Livingston racked up 7.4 points, 5 assists, 3 rebounds, and 1.1 steals. Though that stat line would dip a bit in his sophomore year, Livingston finally seemed to be on his way to becoming a full-fledged superstar in his third year by averaging career highs in almost all categories. He also started in 31 games out of 54 in his junior year, and it looked like nobody could stop his rise to stardom at that point in time. And then... It happened. On the night of February 26, 2007, against the Charlotte Bobcats, Sean had an awkward landing in transition and suffered a nasty injury that almost literally snapped his leg in half like a twig. Fast forward some years later, Livingston admitted that he still can't watch the video of the incident as it still haunts him a bit, but he gave a vivid recollection of what he felt right after the injury occurred. My leg was deformed, my knee joint was dislocated and out of place, it was painful. 10 seconds felt like an hour. It was only like 10-15 seconds, but until they put my knee back into place, it was excruciating for sure. The knee was also deformed, bloodied up and leaking with pus. I just couldn't move it, stiff. It was like I had a spare leg. All of my quad was skinny. It was like a pole with a pineapple in the middle of it. The injury was so bad that his doctor considered amputation if the initial findings didn't turn out in Sean's favor. Here's a snippet of what Sean's doctor said to him at the time. You're going to need a blood test. There is an artery in the back of your leg. If you damaged it, gangrene could set in, and then we'd have to amputate your leg. Thankfully, the blood test ruled out the possibility of amputation, but Sean wasn't out of the woods just yet. In fact, he was very far from it. To know what this man had to go through on that faithful night, here's a full breakdown of the injuries that went on in that one devastating play. First and foremost, Sean had just dislocated his kneecap. And while most players only suffered one type of knee injury at a time, Sean tore three of the four major ligaments in his knee, the ACL, MCL, and PCL, as well as busting both his meniscus all in one go. The road to recovery for Livingston was as painful as the injury itself. Let it go. Come on. This is what it looks like now. He missed the entire 2007-2008 season before returning to action on June 16, 2008, which was 16 months after the injury. It was clear that Livingston had not given up on his NBA dream just yet at this point. But when he had to go back on the court, the Clippers were the ones who had given up on him after acquiring Baron Davis, and they also didn't match a qualifying offer when the contract expired thus making him a free agent. Pat Riley came calling next and gave him a chance to be part of the Heat's winning culture. With a non-guaranteed contract offered to him at the table, Sean still grabbed the opportunity and flew to South Beach. But after blowing by his defender with a dribble in the preseason, Sean felt that something was not right. In his own words, I wasn't the same. The legs still felt wooden. Just four games heading into the season, the Heat voted no confidence on Sean and released him right away. OKC picked him up after spending some time in the G League, and for the next couple of years, the cycle of being dropped and picked up continued for Sean as he played for different teams with pit stops in Washington, Charlotte, Milwaukee, Cleveland, and Brooklyn, before Steve Kerr took interest in him to back Steph Curry up in the point guard slot in 2014. During the grueling phase of changing zip codes, Sean was able to gradually get back in shape, and despite producing mediocre numbers, he was the Mr. Do-It-All for the teams that he played on, as he can get you a little bit of everything in limited minutes. During the last five seasons he spent with the Dubs, Livingston averaged 5.4 points, 2.4 assists, and 2 rebounds a ball game. Though these numbers aren't really the type of figures that will blow your brains out, Sean's real value for the Dubs can be measured on the defensive end as he can guard multiple positions with his height and length. And who could forget that he could abuse smaller guards by killing them with a signature move whenever he was on the block. The great hops, he's going to score this one. Go back baseline, there it is. He's got Perea, he's got him in his sweet spot. Do it, I saw, hope he didn't do it. I saw Durant there, he got 30 minutes tonight. You know what, he probably wants to play more. 
From winning back-to-back -back titles twice in his childhood years to suffering that career-threatening injury in 2007 at the peak of his career, and eventually clawing his way back to health which accumulated in three championships, the Sean Livingston story is nothing but a story of resilience, mental toughness, and hard work. On September 13, 2019, Sean announced that he'll be stepping away from the hardwood for good with his head held high. Though we won't be seeing him pulling his patent and mid-range fadeaways anymore, Livingston is still around the game as the dubs tapped him as the Director of Player Affairs and Engagement in 2020. During his retirement conference, Livingston gave a heartfelt and inspiring message to encourage anyone to keep battling in spite of the hardships that they're going through. After 15 years in the NBA, I'm excited, sad, fortunate, and grateful all in one breath. Hard to put into a caption all of the emotions it takes to try and accomplish your dreams. I wasn't supposed to be here. Anybody that has beat the odds understands the mental and emotional strain it takes to inspire yourself on an uphill war, let alone inspire others. The injury gave me a chance to find and prove to myself that I wouldn't be defined by my circumstances. With my time in the league, what I will be most proud of is the fact that my character, values, and faith were tested, and I persevered. That's a pretty amazing story, right guys? Anyway, let's move on to one of my other favorite stories about resilience in beating the odds. Y'all know who the young glove is, right? I'm talking about Gary Payton II. The dude inspires me a lot, which is why I made this video right here. This dude is amazing, and it's stories like these that inspire me to try and be better every single day. I hope y'all feel the same. Anyway, click the video, guys, and like always, I'll be on the other side.